In late February here, we're not really in what's considered to be valley fever season, Nicole, but local doctors are already seeing those cases start to climb. Yeah, there's been so much focus, Jared, on COVID and experts say too many people are perhaps missing the signs for valley fever. Monica Garcia is live. A very important heads up for all of us, Monica. Yeah, that's right. A lot of us have been going outdoors just to get away from COVID. But remember, valley fever thrives in dry desert soil. It's calm out right now, but when the winds pick up, like we saw over the weekend, fungal spores can travel more than 100 miles. Anytime there's dust floating around, that's where the fungus lives. Headaches, fever, cough, and chills. Sound familiar? The numbers are going up. We aren't talking about COVID. The flu looks like COVID-19, and valley fever looks like both of them, to a degree. Valley fever, lots of times, we call the great masquerader. So similar, you need a blood test to know which one you have, says Frank Lavecchio, Arizona emergency room doctor. But one thing's for sure, while COVID numbers are trending down, valley fever cases are on the rise in the state. If you live here long enough, more likely than not, you will get it. So far this year, there have been more than 1,800 cases reported, nearly three times the amount of cases during the same time in 2019. For every year you live here, you get a 5% increase in the chance of you having it. Dr. Lavecchio says even before COVID, the condition was commonly misdiagnosed which can result in some people having symptoms continue for months, which can land you in the hospital. And on average, every year here in Arizona, 100 people do die from valley fever, although no one is certain exactly why valley fever is on the rise. But one of the leading theories is climate change. In Phoenix, I'm Monica Garcia with Arizona's Family.